welcome to another noisy recording. At least the wind noise isn't so bad. Something I need to show you guys that I uncovered the other day. Um, this valve cover is not the correct one for a 1986 XJ uh, 2.5. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world that it's different. But whoever put it together didn't do the, um, they call it CCB. Um, it's the crankcase ventilation system for old Renix Jeeps. Anyway, listen to the change in the idle. I've measured that. That's a 250 RPM drop. That's not good. Now, the research I did, and I'm not sure the research is totally correct, is if you take this fitting, there's supposed to be a hole in the center that's somewhere around 88 thousandths of an inch. Um, the spec I saw was 2.2 millimeters. I don't know if that's right or not, but if I stick a drill bit in here, I could stick a quarter inch drill bit in here. I already did it, sorry, I put the drill bit back already. But I can stick a drill bit in all the way. And that's obviously way too big so it's like it's like taking the PCV hose off and leaving it run just like that um, what kind of clued me into this was when I had the uh, the MT2500 um, scanner on here it showed that the um, the engine was running extremely rich at the low end and extremely lean at the high end now the extreme lean part I'm not sure about but I know sure as hell about the low end. Um, it showed that it was adding a lot of fuel to the mixture to try and make up for a massive vacuum leak. Yeah, sure, there could be a bad intake gasket or something like that, <clears throat> but I know this is a, in the vacuum world, we call it a gross leak. It's, it's severe, this has to be fixed. So what I'm gonna do, uh, pardon the wind, I'll try to speak up a little. Um, if I take this off, one of the previous owners, I think the one just before me, because the original owner, um, his fingerprints are still all over this thing and he took real good care of it. Anyway, uh, wow, yeah, that's a huge hole. So that's an eighth inch pipe thread and that's a three inch, that's a three eighths barbed fitting right here and that's eighth inch pipe. So. I can see through there. Let's see if I can do the same for you guys. Uh, man, I don't know if this is going to work, but let's just try it. Oh, I thought I saw. So you can see all the way through it. Are we focused? I can see daylight through there. Now, that's huge. That's got to be not quite a quarter inch but it's 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 not restricted in the least now that's also assuming that there are no uh, leaks in this um, I don't know if that's a compression thread or a straight thread or what the hell that is so what do you say we find out <clears throat> oh, I don't have a second wrench Anyway, um, I just took a nice chip out of it. Anyway, this is, uh, you know, this is okay. It fits together and everything, but it's, it's, just, it's just a massive vacuum leak. Now, part of the reason I discovered this this morning, besides the numbers on the scanner kind of giving it away, was I tried to take the cap off. I couldn't physically get the cap off. The vacuum was so strong, it wouldn't let me get the cap off. And I thought, well, okay, the cap's jacked up, it's old, dirty, whatever. So I pulled the hose off and the cap popped right off. I came out here originally to do a blow-by test. You just remove your oil cap while it's running, you see if smoke comes out. And um, that's where this whole thing started today. So anyway, um, this thing's pulling so much vacuum that it's pulling oil vapor out of here and burning it. So I'm losing, I have no leaks in the engine at all. and the um, 
it's, it's using oil like crazy. Um, so this is a huge portion of the problem right here. So I don't know how I'm going to do this. I mean, there's a, you know, a few ways. Maybe I could solder a orifice in here, a piece of brass, and drill. You know, 88 thousandths is pretty big. I think I'm going to start slightly small and uh, drill it out maybe over time and see how things work out um, on the uh, scanner because it's telling me the mixture is way rich because of a vacuum leak. Um, at least at the, the short-term fuel trims. Long-term, um, not sure why that would show that it was trying to lean the mixture out so much. But anyway, um, this has got to be fixed. This is ridiculous, man. Um, sorry I don't have a screwdriver or a drill to show you, but this thing is straight through. I can see this is the restriction in this whole thing. That 3 8 is obviously pretty big in there. So anyway, this is what I've got to solve. So uh, I guess instead of standing here stammering and stuttering, I will go figure it out and I'll see you guys later. All right, here is what I came up with. It took me several tries. I was trying to get a piece to fit inside that hole, but I just couldn't machine it perfect enough. So I made this disc and it's got an 067 hole in it. And uh, when you drop it in here, it fits perfect. And then when you wrench it down good, it, uh, it traps it. So there's no, no vacuum leak across it. <clears throat> so, uh, 067 beats. Man, I don't know what that thing was. Um, let me go wrench this tight and I'll give you that dimension too. All right, so here is the difference. This goes all the way through. Well, it's supposed to. Oh, well, the, the, the port, the little piece I put in there is in there. But anyway, this is the difference between the two. This is the hole I made just now, and this is the hole it was before. The difference is massive. So what this means is this is just a raw vacuum leak. This is a little closer to the... Um, you know, the calibrated leak that uh, PVC valves, or in this case, CCV valves are. So, anyway, that just needs to get screwed back in here. And I'll bet the idle is going to be a lot lower. It's tight in there. When I shook it, it didn't rattle, so I think the seal is pretty good between these two brass pieces, anyway. Okay, there we go. I'm not going to shove this all the way on, but I'll make sure it's at least leak tight. All right, let's see how the engine sounds. not rocking back and forth and there's no smoke so it appears that the blow-by is you know normal okay here's what it used to sound like drive this a while and then check the, um, the short-term uh, 
uh, trims and see if it's uh, it was around 190. See how much closer to 128 it gets. 128 is um, is the center, or in modern cars, it would be equivalent to zero. Yeah, the engine's a lot smoother. Slower and it's smoother. Um, let me check see if it's warmed up. It's about half warmed up. Um, let me grab the scanner and we'll hook it on and see if it made any changes sitting here at idle. Sorry about the wind. Here is our um, our scanner. Uh, if you can see the short-term fuel trim, the middle line, it's bouncing between 180 something and 200. That's still way too freaking high. It needs to be around 128. The lean, uh, the long-term fuel trim is around 80. It was 50 a while back. Um, the one thing I can tell right now is the engine's idling a lot smoother. A lot smoother. It's at full, um, full temperature. Let me show you. Well, there's the battery voltage. It's around 14. Coolant says 203. If you guys can see that or not. All right. Second line from the bottom, short term fuel trim. Now, this thing hasn't been driven at all. This is the first time it's had that uh, orifice put in there. Should lean out over time. This should get this number should get lower. So I could reset the the ECU by short, you know, disconnecting the battery and all that. But I kind of like to see how it uh, it does. Although on the other hand, I'd like to get this shit done, you know. Anyway, um, I'm gonna leave it for now. I'll let you guys know in the comments or in another video how those numbers turned out. Thanks. See you, bye. All right, I couldn't stand the weight, so I am shorting. Can you see me over here? I'm shorting the terminals together. It's been well over 30 seconds. Let's see if those fuel trims got set back to factory standards. I don't know. I know a lot of guys say to do this on the Renix, but not everybody knows what they're doing on a Renix Jeep. Okay. All right, let's bring it in the center here. So I can try and keep you guys in frame. Not too much glare. All right, let me go start this bad boy up. at 128 and 128 so the computer's reset we just got to see where it wants to be all right if you can see it here the second line from the bottom um, short-term fuel trim 
it was on both sides of 128. So, you know, that's not horrible. Um, coolant's at 194, so it's down just a little bit. It usually idles around uh, 203, 204 with a 195 thermostat. It's about uh, 86, 88 degrees out. Yeah, the engine's a lot smoother. Man, oh man. I can feel it, see it, hear it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, you know, right now it's on both sides of 128, a little low, a little high. Um, but that's because it's not done um, taking account of itself, looking at all the sensors as you drive. It's just sitting here in the driveway. So um, later on, another day, we'll after driving it around a while, we'll uh, we'll look at these numbers and see where they go. They were way off, man, way off. And this was a huge change, so we need to, I guess, reset the computer. I just was not feeling patient. Anyway, I hope you can read this. Um, long term, since it's just been running a little while, what the computer reset is going to stay at 128. So it'll eventually move. All right. See you guys another day. See you bye. All right, I had to try one more thing. I just can't stand it. Whew. Oh, that's the air conditioning. Sorry, it scared me. Brake parts cleaner, extremely flammable, right? Okay, listen. Did you hear it slow down a lot? The fuel trim drops like a brick, too. Fuel trim's going down to 30 from 150. So the third intake runner from the front is leaking like a sieve. Anyway, gosh, we got another uh, vacuum leak. What do you know? All right, I swear to God, that's it. <laughs> See you, bye.